the great Johnny Mathis. Johnny Dennis Nardone, good day to you. Oh, bless your heart, Dennis. Thank you for that nice introduction. My goodness. Oh, you are tremendous all these years, and God bless uh, the good Lord for keeping you going all these years. So, uh, first thing I wanted to ask you, how you feeling? I feel good for an old guy. I'm celebrating, let's see, what am I, 83, almost 83, 82. Uh, I don't believe that. Yeah, this September I'll be 83 years old. I remember when I was 18 years old when yeah. starting out. <laughs> well, I remember when I was 18 watching you on TV. But anyway, uh, New York, you got a great show coming up again at the Westbury Theater, Westbury, Long Island. We'll talk about that real quick and mark it down. Saturday, July 13th, 8 p.m., ladies and gentlemen, uh, the legendary Johnny Mathis. Uh, you got to get out there and uh, watch him perform singing and a uh, great show. Westbury Theater. Westbury, Long Island, hop and skip jump from here, and of course all our Queens people in uh, Brooklyn and Long Island and Westchester, Bronx, and you got to get to the Westbury Theater, Saturday, July 13th, 8 p.m., it's uh, the voice of the Romance Tour, am I correct on that? <laughs> well, the nice thing about, uh, you know, uh, that venue uh, performing at Westbury is that People get, uh, they're very close to you because it's a theater in the round, one of the few left, I think, yeah. and I really enjoy singing there because you're in close proximity to the people, and it's very intimate. Yeah, they're right on top of you, and you can actually see them singing along to you. You can read their faces. I mean, you can, like, reach out. There they are. And, they, of yep. course, they love you, and New York loves you, and uh, just everybody loves you for all these years. The voice of the Romance Tour. How'd you come up with that? <laughs> I, had, I don't know where these people get these uh, uh, monikers from, but it's, as long as it's positive, that's all that matters. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Johnny Mathis. Uh, uh, Johnny, let me, uh, before we get into anything else, if you don't mind, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, now, l let's get into, uh, l let's say, um, a day in the life of Johnny Mathis. Well, what do you do when you wake up? Do you, you have breakfast? Like you say, you're going to play some golf. Do you exercise? Do you go uh, do a little high jumping? Uh, what, what, give us a little day in the life of Johnny Mathis. I, uh, for the last oh, 25 years, I've been getting up at 4 in the morning, uh, have uh, a cup of coffee, uh, take a shower, comb my hair, and go to the gym mm -hmm. at 5.30 and uh, work out for um, about an hour and then come home and uh, take care of any responsibilities that I have. But when I was a high jump and a hurdler in, in college, uh, I got involved uh, with an exercise routine in the morning and it kind of, I don't know, kind of uh, agreed with me. And, uh, and I've been doing it uh, for the rest of my life. And it seems to, uh, seems to well, it keeps me uh, at least looking the right way when you're on stage, you know, you're supposed to look up and down, not sideways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's a little bit of the day in life of uh, Johnny Mathis, uh, you know, uh, as an icon. And, uh, uh, and now, do you still uh, doing a little vocalization here and there? Uh, uh, you know, in the afternoon, say, yeah, let me jump on the piano, let me do this and uh, sing a little, uh, uh, work on something, something pops in your head. Do you, do, do you still do a lot of that? Or a little bit of that? Well, a little bit of all of the above. Um, I, you know, my father, God bless my dad and my mom, yes. uh, had seven kids, and uh, and we sang a lot. My dad was the reason that, that I sing today. Uh, he, That's what I heard from the time I was a little baby, uh, is my father singing. And it was something that wasn't a chore. It was just, uh, it was a way of celebrating uh, whatever was going on in his life. If he, if he woke up and he felt good, he sang. If he woke up and he felt bad, he still sang. And uh, that's the way it is with me. Uh, it's something that is, uh, is so prevalent in my life that uh, it's, it's hard to explain. Uh, it's, it's, it's always there, music. And, yeah, of course, your dad was a big influence uh, uh, in your career uh, because you could have uh, gone into the Olympics, but you headed towards um, uh, Ed New York for the Ed Sullivan Show. So he was a big influence in your life of which way to go and to the things to that nature, correct? My dad was an amazing man. I loved him and my mom so much. Raising seven children mm -hmm. uh, on domestic wages, the way they worked for other people, 
uh, always depending on uh, the kindness of others. And uh, we never wanted for anything. Uh, and fortunately, uh, I got an opportunity to sing because I lived in San Francisco. And people heard me sing, and before I knew it, at the age of 18, I was in New York making my first recordings. Uh, and uh, music is uh, so much a part of my life that it's uh, almost impossible to think about uh, my life without it. Yes, Johnny Mathis, ladies and gentlemen, on the radio, uh, radio as well as the telephone. Westbury Theater, Saturday, July 13th. Get your tickets. The Voice of the Romance Tour. And uh, tell me about uh, this album, The Great American Songbook. Well, we got to try to keep uh, abreast with the music that's uh, popular at the time. Uh, that's sort of how I started my career, singing the popular songs of the day. And this is another example of that. Uh, these songs are really interesting, and uh, they're all kind of new uh, recording techniques. And uh, f when I listen to this album, uh, there's all sorts of new stuff going on, and it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it very much. Oh, so uh, did you pick out the songs? Uh, how did we make all the arrangements there? Who to work with you on this album? <laughs> Yeah, they, they bombard me with every song you can ever think about. And then, and I have to sit down and think about uh, which ones that I uh, like. And, and uh, the more important thing is which ones can I sing. And yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's a process. Uh, and it's interesting, uh, but it's time consuming. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I've chosen the right ones that, that suit my voice at this point in my life. Yeah. Yes, Johnny Mathis, uh, voice of the Romance Tour. Now, besides Westbury, uh, you, you're going to be busy for the rest of the year. I, I hear Atlantic City, then uh, California, uh, Midwest, uh, Tennessee. Uh, so uh, then you're going to Hawaii. You're going to finish up Hawaii. Uh, you got the strength and the focus to uh, do all this, uh, and I'm sure you're looking forward to it. And once again, you're coming to Westbury uh, Saturday, July 13th. So this has got to be uh, very energizing for you. Well, you have to go where the people are, and that's what I do. Yeah, and the people still love you after all these years, uh, and that's great. Uh, yeah, you mentioned your first song there on your album, but uh, chances are 1957, uh, and, and then it, it hit a big, uh, what, 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 how thrilled were you back then? <laughs> I was over the moon, I couldn't believe it. I was just a, a, a young kid, uh, my goodness, uh, I remember when I made my first recording, I was 18 years old, yeah. and uh, I, w I had left San Francisco for the first time in my life uh, to go all the way to New York. And fortunately, I met some wonderful people, the, uh, the man who signed me to my recording contract, George Avakian, who was the head of jazz at, at uh, Columbia Records at the time, and uh, I was all set to become the next jazz singer. But uh, they had different ideas about the way I sounded, and uh, uh, I ended up uh, being uh, what you call a popular song yes, um, yes. singer, and uh, it uh, seems to suit my uh, my voice very well. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I talked about uh, Ed Sullivan. Uh, you went on Johnny uh, Johnny uh, Carson a few times, and he made a great uh, comment about you, didn't he? Did he call you the greatest? Uh, ballad sing of all time, something to that nature. <laughs> That's very nice to hear. I don't know how Nat King Cole or Billy Eckstein or Frank Sinatra or some of those people might think of that. Yeah. But that was a very nice compliment and I uh, appreciate it. Uh, now that you mention all those other names, growing up or, uh, you know, just before you hit your big hit, uh, 15, 16 years old, uh, who, who, who did you look up to? Who did you uh, say, hey, I, I like his, I like their style, I like their singing. Uh, it kind of uh, followed them uh, back then. Who did you admire back then? Matt King Cole and Billy Eckstein were my big vocal heroes. Mm -hmm. Johnny Mathis, talking about vocal, there's a young lady that was uh, a big part of your life and your, and your singing and your music and your vocalization. Uh, her last name was Cox, wasn't it? What was her first name? Connie or something? Connie Cox was uh, a lady that was introduced to me at a very early age, and my dad was uh, uh, my biggest supporter. He and I used to get in his car, and we'd drive around San Francisco looking for somebody uh, a voice teacher uh, from the time I was about 12 or 13 years old. And uh, lo and behold, this wonderful woman uh, heard me sing, um, and she had many, many other 
voice students, uh, but she took me on, and uh, at, at no remuneration, I, I had no money, so I couldn't pay for my lessons. So what I did is I did errands for her, and uh, I cleaned her, uh, her studio, mm -hmm. and she gave me voice lessons. And uh, it was the beginning of my, absolutely my life as a singer, because I had no way of knowing vocally uh, what I was doing at such an early age. Really? And uh, she set me on the right course, uh, made sure that I didn't uh, overdo it and, and ruin my vocal cords. Uh, so she was the, the catalyst uh, for my life as a singer. Yeah. Uh, her name was Connie Cox, yep. and uh, I'm forever in her debt. There you go. And ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking to one of the finest of all time entertainers, performers, singers. Uh, his name is Johnny Mattis, and uh, well, he's going on tour. Uh, and of course, he's going to be at Westbury, Long Island, Saturday, July 13th, 8 p.m., the voice of the Romance Tour. Now, uh, Johnny, uh, my show can be heard on the internet, so we have people all over the country tuning in. So uh, I just want to advise them that you're going to be around the country, as I mentioned previously. Prior, Atlantic City, uh, California, San Diego, um, Indiana, Ohio. So you're going to be around the country, so they can go to your website and uh, check out the schedule and, of course, uh, get to see uh, and listen and hear and be part of uh, Johnny Mathis. Because I think everyone in, the, in a lifetime should be part of Johnny Mathis. And, you know, Christmas is still not Christmas without listening to Johnny Mathis, i got to tell you. Hello. Uh you know, come from a large family. Christmas is the biggest deal of the year for us. And of course, uh, I sang like most young people do in the choirs and what have you in school and in church. And uh, that was the beginning of uh, my uh, career. And the uh, Christmas music, of course, was very important. Uh, and uh, I still uh, have a, an affinity for Christmas music. And over the years, I've been very fortunate to have success uh, singing a lot of Christmas songs. Absolutely love them. Yeah, yes, and uh, like I said, when you when you think of Christmas, you automatically think of uh, Johnny Mathis, that's for sure. And uh, and I reminisce all the time. And, and I like to go on YouTube and, uh, and watch some of his old uh, TV shows. Now, Johnny, so many, so many. I mean, I can go down a list of... Uh, all your albums and uh, hundreds, uh, well not hundreds, about 79 or 80 albums. Uh, the hits on the Billboard is amazing. Uh, your singles, and uh, it's just so, uh, just a great resume of uh, your career in, in recording. Uh, but uh, it's 63 years, that's where we're on right now, right? And still going strong? Well, uh, my dad was my biggest supporter, and of course he told me that whether I could or whether I couldn't, uh, I was gonna want to sing uh, all my life. And he was absolutely right. Uh, I can't tell you how important uh, he was uh, in uh, giving me, uh, at, at such a young age, uh, the information that was going to, uh, going to be with me all of my life. And that was take care of your voice uh, yeah. Make sure that uh, you don't do anything to harm it because uh, whether you can or you can't, you're going to want to sing. Yeah. And God bless my dad and my mom. Uh, they were always there for me. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah this is, uh, you know, I mentioned, of course, all your hits and things like that and your albums. But this is uh, an, an amazing feat because now you, you coincide with rock and roll. And uh, Johnny's greatest hits spent an astonishing 490 weeks on a Billboard magazine album charts, a record finally broken by Pink Floyd, of all people, The Dark Side of the Moon in 1982. <laughs> what was your reaction to that when The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd uh, breaks your record? I said, Pink who? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, that uh, time marches on. Yeah. Uh, that's what you have to think in this business. Uh, God bless them. Uh, you know, uh, we're there together, and that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, you did a few duet records and uh, uh, recordings. In 1978, you did Too Much, Too Little. Uh, do you enjoy doing the duets with, uh, I think I was Denise Williams, and you did some others like with uh, Dionne Warwick and Natalie Cole. Did you enjoy working with these people? Oh, absolutely. Uh, my lady, 
my lady who sang they're, uh, they're the foundation of, uh, of my happiness uh, as far as music is concerned and to actually sing with these great singers like you mentioned Dale Morg and uh, there's, there's, there's so many others uh, Denise Williams and uh, uh, I even sang with Lena Horne and uh, the, uh, uh, I, I can't even uh, uh, remember some of the uh, wonderful associations that I've had over the years yeah, yeah. With, uh, with some of the great singers of all time and uh, they were very kind and uh, and I got a chance to uh, to sing with them uh, even uh, um, Leontine Price the wonderful uh, opera singer um, she and I uh, did several uh, concerts together uh, so it's, it's, it's been a, a very rewarding life I know that people who sing and, and make music uh, do it because uh, they love doing it uh, but it's also uh, wonderful when you get recognition, as I have over the years, and I'm, I'm very grateful and very humbled about it. Yes, Johnny Mathis, Westbury Theater, Saturday, July 13, 8 p.m., all part of the Voice of Romance Tour. Go to his website and check out the schedule. It's going to be all over the country until the end of the year. Uh, Johnny, you have a favorite uh, Johnny Mathis song by any chance? <laughs> I can't even think of them. Uh, I was listening to some recordings that I did in South America uh, in, in, uh, um, uh, in Portuguese, and uh, I, I still love uh, singing in languages. Uh, uh, growing up in San Francisco in the school system, uh, we, uh, we were around languages uh, in school all the time. Um, so that's fun for me too. And uh, well, you mentioned once in a while I'll take out all these old recordings that I did when I was very young uh, and uh, listen to them, and hoping that I got my French right or my Italian right or my Spanish right uh, as far as the music is concerned. Well, the, that, now that you mentioned Italian, because I just wanted to say, growing up in an Italian household, uh, I can remember my mother and my father so excited that Johnny Mathis released an Italian album. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, that, uh, did you do, did you pull that one out and listen to that once in a while? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, t let me ask you this real quick, if you don't mind, before you get on the uh, first tee. Let me throw a couple names at you. Did you ever work or uh, perform with uh, people like Connie Francis or the Rat Pack or Engelbert? Or even the Beatles and Elvis or Beach Boys, people like that, did you run across them? I've come in contact with everyone you've mentioned uh, over the years. We are all in the same business and we are all at least interested in, uh, uh, you know, what everybody does and uh, do you know who I am and I know who you are and that sort of thing goes on all the time. And of course, uh, because I travel so much and have been fortunate enough to travel all over the world, I get to meet all of the people uh, that I've ever listened to um, on records and uh, sometimes uh, we get a chance to do an impromptu, an impromptu uh, you know, session, singing together uh, because uh, we're all uh, very humbled, I think, uh, by the success that we've had even though it's, it's an enjoyable experience. 